Good morning, Luther Seminary community. It's great to see you here today. I'm Pastor Jenny Grangard, seminary pastor at Luther. It looks like it's about to rain here. I don't know where you are, what storms you've been facing, either by weather or in your life, but we're glad to gather here together this day. We've got Ashley Wheeler with us to preach a word. Ashley works in the contextual learning office. We're grateful for her presence. Zach is here playing music. Um, you'll be invited to sing along with muted mics, but not muted voices. Um, Anna Farrow is here as assisting minister um, to lead us in prayer. And um, Jamie is behind the scenes as our di digital sacristan. So welcome everyone um, to worship this day. Thanks for offering your prayers and presence here. Awe-inspiring God. We gather together to praise you for your tender mercy. May the light of your face shine on us and restore us back to health. Listening, God, you hear the cries of all who are in need. We gather this morning to honor your saving health among the nations. May we sing your song that makes us glad and lets your way be known upon all the earth. People of every nation are called to gather and praise to you. In thankfulness, all shall eat and be satisfied. God has blessed us indeed. May all the ends of the earth stand in awe. Stand in awe of the one who hears the cry of the poor. Stand in awe of the one who will It all of the one who hears the cry of the poor, for they shall eat and be satisfied. from Matthew chapter 15. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone, they are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, 
yet even the dog eats the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Word of God, word of life. I have found that I'm struggling to stay persistent in my faith. This world feels and is heavy right now. I've started to question, is my faith strong enough? As I read this text, I felt overwhelmed by the love this Canaanite woman has for her child and her persistent faith as she stands in awe before Jesus. I am not a mother, though I long to be one. I am struggling with that. My husband and I have been on a five-year journey with infertility, and I'm tired. It is emotionally, spiritually, and physically exhausting. And I'm also tired of not being heard. Well-meaning family and friends will often say, oh, but you can adopt, or you can have IVF, or have you tried this? Or I heard of a woman who just stopped worrying about it and then she got pregnant. And the stories go on and on and on. The words of platitude don't bring me comfort. They make me feel more isolated and certainly not heard or seen. I'm struggling to stay persistent in my faith. God, if no one is listening, are you? Struggling to stay persistent in my faith in this time, and I don't think I'm alone. As I look out at our world that is grieving and crying out, I can't help but think how long can we bear this? And then we come to this reading and I think, what does this mean for our communities? What does this mean when a woman encounters Jesus and is not heard, at least certainly not by the disciples who simply complain and dismiss her and want her to leave? What does all of this mean for us here today? We have seen this story play out across time and space and culture and religion and race. Women are often not heard or valued or seen as sacred and holy beings created and loved by God. Women of color often not heard or valued or seen as sacred and holy beings created and loved by God. What does this mean when four out of five indigenous women experience violence in their lifetime? When the indigenous communities have an alarming rate of missing and murdered indigenous women, girls, and two spirit. What does it mean when they aren't being heard? What does it mean when we continue to keep silent around the violence against transgender black women? when black bodies are three times more likely to be killed by police in America, when immigrant families are still separated at the border, people seeking asylum, many of them children are being denied access to safety, when one in three women has experienced violence in her lifetime, and what does it mean when people say black lives matter and the response is all lives matter? What does this mean when we have an increasing number of COVID cases in this country and people still refuse to wear a mask and socially distance? Like, what does it mean, God? I have a lot of questions and I'm struggling to find any answers. I look out and I know I'm swirling. I'm struggling to find meaning and I know I have compassion fatigue. I've felt this before working in the hospital and as I look out, I see so many of us 
with compassion for fatigue, wanting to help, not sure where to start, and struggling ourselves. So this past week, I took some time away from my computer, from my home, and spent some time out on the road with my husband. We went out into creation and we unplugged, a privilege I don't take lightly. One of the places we went to was Makoshika State Park in Western Montana. And as I stood there with all of these swirling questions, hiking up one of the trails, I looked around and saw wild sage growing in the field. And as I stood there in awe, the wind kicked up and I felt the perfume of the sage swirl around me. And I found myself in awe at this sacred presence. It is easy to look into this story and see that our Canaanite woman is not heard. She isn't, at least not by the disciples. And Jesus gives us a teaching moment as he stands into his power. When we encounter someone who is sharing a sacred part of their story, their journey, we are called to listen. We are facing the sacred every day in our communities. If we only open our eyes or our ears or move our feet or help with our hands. When a community cries out Black Lives Matter, we listen, we stand behind them, and we work together to dismantle the racist policies and racist society that created an environment for them to experience anything less than sacred and holy. Our Canaanite woman stands in the sacredness of Christ and her persistent faith brings healing to her daughter through Christ. I am still struggling. But as I stood in that field, I am reminded of the sacred and the holiness of God as the wind moves around me. And wherever you are, as the rain falls or the sun shines, the beauty of God's creation in and all around us. It's sacred. And if you are struggling to keep that persistent faith, you aren't alone. Let's sit together. We cannot save this world. We have a Messiah who does that. We are called to listen and hold space for each other, to stand in awe at the sacredness of our lives and to be heard by each other, by our communities. Let's stand together. And when we need to listen, let's listen. Amen.
this will be normal. You will hear if we don't. you all to unmute your microphones for the prayers. Each petition ends with the words, Lord, in your mercy, and we shall respond. Hear our prayer. Let us pray. With the whole people of God, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Heavenly Mother, thank you for this day, for the air that we breathe, the water that quenches our thirst, the roofs over our heads, the food that nourishes our body. Let all have equitable access to the basic needs of life for safety, health, comfort, and contentment. Silence the voice that says more and uplift the voice that says share. Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah, our prayer. Just ruler, let our leaders stand in awe and follow your ways. Guide those in charge to make changes that are good for all, not just the few. Let the people have the wisdom to hear the voices of all, to vote and to make changes in communities, to uplift the lowly and the downtrodden, following in a Christ-like manner. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Great comforter, be with those that are grieving, that are sick, that are hurting, that just want a day of peace. This day, we especially pray for Cole Binder, Pastor President Edita Torres Lescano, and the family of Leon Rodriguez. We also pray for the communities in Iowa affected by the storms, dealing with the destruction and waiting for power. Heal the wounds that we see all around us and give us the courage to call them out. Let our words bring peace and understanding instead of defiling our world. Let the wounds of oppression, of sickness, of pain, and of not understanding be reconciled and healed in our world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Our prayer. Teacher, help us to gain new understandings and to discover and rediscover your truth. We call as students longing to learn and act on those learnings. Holy Spirit, lead us to paths of listening, peace, reconciliation, hope, and love as we move through our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Let all that we have prayed, those both spoken and unspoken, be lifted up to you. We pray all of this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, Our Father in heaven, 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 hallowed be, be your name. name. Your kingdom your come, 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 your will, will be done, done, will be done, done on earth, earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us, give us, give us our sins. We forgive those who forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time, time of trial, trial and, and deliver us from evil. evil. For the kingdom, the, kingdom, the power, and, power, and the glory are yours, for now, now and forever. forever. Amen. 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 Revealed in Christ, the word of God creates a living 
this blessing. May God who restores, Christ who hears, and the Spirit who empowers bless you and keep you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve. Thanks be to God. for your presence today, your prayers, um, and for your listening ear and heart. Thank you, Ashley, for that heavy and heartfelt sermon. Uh, we pray for you and your family. Um, thanks all for the way you've poured out support in the chats. Ashley, I don't know if you got a chance to see that. Um, that's what community is. We support one another. So thank you, and we'll continue to support each other. Thank you, Zach, for the music. Anna for your prayers, Jamie and Tom for all that you've put in for this day. Grace and peace be with you all. This is our final chapel until the fall semester begins. Our next chapel will be Friday, September 18th. We'll look forward to seeing you back then. Take care and peace. <laughs>